Hello everybody, welcome back. We're in the shop again and uh, I'm going to introduce you to a new project. I've been working on this one but uh, I don't think I've showed it before. This is a CJ5, as you can see, dual wheel. Uh, CJ5 dual wheel snowblower Jeep. And I've got the chassis finished. Got the axles rebuilt, transmission transfer case, engines rebuilt. And uh, I've got the wheels painted as you can see here and I've just been kind of picking away little by little on this one uh, if you've been following along you'll know that uh, that FJ40 with that uh, marine engine recently got delivered and uh, the next project to get out of here is going to be that CJ3A and I'll bring you some shots of that as well but um, <clears throat> I just pulled this one out of its storage area because uh, I wanted to get the engine in it. It's just been sitting on a stand for a while. But uh, I just wanted to get the engine in it to keep everything together. So, what we have is um, the CJ5 came from uh, Long Island. It sat on an airport um, runway and, and was supposed to do some snow removal there. Uh, but it just sat there for most of its life. This vehicle came to me with 108 original miles on it um, but at some point it moved over here to Connecticut and sat under a pine tree and pine needles just rotted the body away completely so I built a new body for it and I'm still kind of tinkering with that I made it extra heavy duty and I'll show you that when I pull it out of the little shed that it's in um, <clears throat> but the frame was pretty nice and um, the engine with only 108 miles, I thought I'd get away without rebuilding anything, but the whole thing had to come apart, and uh, it's got new bearings in it, and valves, and valve guides, and basically a complete rebuild on that. Um, <clears throat> but it's coming along, and uh, in this Dana 70, I've got a, a Eaton Easy Locker in there, and to put these together with dual wheels uh, from the factory they had uh, 587 gears in the rear and they had 538 in the front they used a factory Jeep wheel on the front and they used these bud wheels in the back uh, and the, the height difference was supposed to make up for the the gear ratio being off but so many of these dual wheel vehicles have transfer cases or front axles just exploded from the difference in the gear ratios that it didn't work out. So you can't get a 587 gear for the front and you can't get uh, a 538 for the back. So I've got 488's in here, front and rear. Uh, like I say, locker in the rear and a locker in the front. And this front end is out of an FC 170 that's a Dana 44 and it looks stock it's got the knuckles on it, it's original and stuff but what I did was uh, take it apart and narrowed it I, uh, I cut the spot welds out, pulled the tubes out and um, I didn't just cut the knuckle off and re-weld it, I pulled the whole tube out and um, put the uh, the housing where I wanted it and then I uh, shortened the tubes and uh, welded everything back together and when you do that you get the large FC 170 brakes you get the correct hubs and obviously the wheels came off there so that is a custom shortened Dana 44 and uh, I put 488's in a locker in there like I said and kept the original look with the knuckles and then I had to have some custom axle shafts made. Um, no big deal there. Plenty of guys that can do that if uh, if you need that. And I still got to get the hubs in there. I've got a set of new old stock Spicer hubs that I've been saving for a project. I'm going to use them on this one. And we're going to finish up that custom clutch linkage that uh, I showed you a while back and get that in here and working and we've got a four speed in here, this is a T98 just filled it up with transmission lube yesterday 
and I think you can see still gear oil on the gear there um, I'll just show you what that looks like that gear oil is nice and heavy you see it pick it up immediately and that'll stay on the gear for you and um, if anybody needs gear oil uh, I have gear oil available I have the uh, correct steering gear lube uh, we've talked about it in the past I've got real nice differential lube uh, steering knuckle lube and stuff like that and that's basically how I support these videos uh, selling the lubricants so if anybody needs anything feel free to contact me and I'm shipping orders out daily so we'll get to firing this engine up next uh, as you can see well, you can't actually see but there's the leads I got the Pertronics in there uh, I've got their epoxy coil I like their epoxy coil uh, as far as vibration it really it really lasts uh, it doesn't leak oil like the oil filled ones so I use those and uh, I use their seven millimeter black wires they don't ever seem to break down they're real nice wire and uh, we'll get this thing fired up in the next uh, oh, I don't know day or so and I'll bring that to you but um, just wanted to give you a quick introduction to the vehicle <clears throat> and as I do little things to it I'll show you what's happening and um, like I say we're making a super heavy duty vehicle here and uh, I'm gonna take you outside and show you the uh, the snowblower apparatus that came with this and um, there's a complete framework that goes underneath this but that was routed as well I have to remake that and uh, there's a Wisconsin engine that goes in the back that powers the snowblower <clears throat> and we'll go outside and look at that next okay there's a shot of the front of the snowblower that goes on that Jeep and on top of that you can see the chute and that's controlled from the inside it's pretty pretty comfortable setup you can reach it from the driver's seat real easy uh, this needs a complete restoration sandblasting and there's some rusty areas that need to be taken care of you can see the original paint in there these are originally yellow not my favorite color especially with the red that we're putting on there um, but I might go back with the original color I'm not sure the thing about this snowblower is you got a Wisconsin engine sitting in the bed and here's your drive right here okay and there's a dry shaft that runs from there to the Wisconsin engine and that runs right by the driver's door basically right by your head it goes because the Wisconsin engine's kinda high so you can't get in this vehicle on the driver's side you have to go in through the passenger side and get in there a little bit of a nuisance but I'm not gonna change anything around and switch anything but um, uh, I have a hard top with it and that's in rough shape too but uh, I'm gonna put the hard top back on and um, I've got to find a Wisconsin engine because the one that came with it is completely seized up and messed up but we'll go look at that next and uh, I'll show you how that works okay, here's a shot of the Wisconsin engine as, as it came out of the vehicle it was missing a bunch of parts um, but I have a few pieces for it but it's it really took a beat and it sat outside for so long um, and it's seized up tight that's the Wisconsin VG 4D uh, 35 37 horsepower depending where you where you look um, I think the PTO may be salvageable I'm hoping I haven't taken anything apart yet but that's how it sits in the vehicle that PTO is facing um, basically the back of your seat and here's the drive that powers the drive shaft you see all this stuff you see all that angle iron there is rusted right out I mean it just took a beating so all that's gonna have to be rebuilt and the drive shaft takes off from there right to the drive of the uh, snow blower and like I say it's just you know spinning right by your head there where you're sitting in the driver's seat not the greatest setup but I imagine it works so I'm on the hunt for a decent uh, Wisconsin engine uh, like I say it's a VG 4D anybody's got one let me know 
um, and we'll make this uh, we'll make this complete with a new engine. And uh, there's a million different engines I was thinking of using, but I like to keep the Wisconsin in there and just keep it original. So uh, <clears throat> most of the ones I find are all beat up and need rebuilding anyway. So I'm looking to find a fairly decent one. Um, so that's what I'm on a hunt for now. And uh, that's the project. And if you have any questions or anything, shoot me a comment. And if you uh, like the video, hit the thumbs up. And uh, let me know what you think about the content. And anything you want to see, just let me know. And uh, I'll bring you that CJ3A uh, restoration update next or soon. Um, we're, uh, we're putting the body together now. The back half and the front half are going to go together. And I'll show you that as it becomes available. Okay, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.